going to record. All right. So um, this is the command compliance class and we're going to start in command. So the first thing that you will do is type in agent.kw.com. That takes you to the command platform. Okay. And then you'll use your username and password to sign in. It's the same one that goes for all Keller Williams systems. And when you log in, it takes you to your home screen. On here, you can see your tasks, you can see your goals, some things that um, are updated in designs. If you click on the red KW in the top, you can see words. I always like to show everybody that just in case you're not aware. That way you don't have to guess what the icons mean. And the first thing to do before you create an opportunity is you have to have a contact. So we're going to click on contacts. Okay, we're going to click right here on add contact. Most buttons that you're going to be looking for in this system are this blue turquoise color here. So we're going to click on add a contact. Currently, the only thing that is required is a name. But we can do Jane Doe. You give Jane Doe an email address. Uh, no reply at no reply.com. And then we can give her a phone number. Um, this is kind of the bare minimum to start creating your database. We're not really going to touch on databases today, but. Um, if you just have a name in here, you're not really building a true database. Okay. And if you would like to do any of the smart plans, you can click on add more information right here. And um, some of the smart plans require things like they may require um, their birthday or their physical address for the neighborhood nurtures, that kind of thing. But I'll just go ahead and start here since we're just really trying to um, create a uh, opportunity to turn in for compliance on this one. Okay, so we can scroll to the bottom and we can click on create. Once the contact has been created, you can search for the contact here or we can just go to opportunities. I'm just going to show going to opportunities. So if we click on the red KW, we can see the word opportunities. And then what we want to do is create an opportunity. So in dot loop, we called everything loops. In uh, command, we call them opportunities because every person that you meet and start cultivating a relationship with is an opportunity for a closing. So when we click on create opportunity, it pops up here and everything with a red asterisk is required. The market center is Denton. The opportunity type is here. This is where you choose whether it's a listing, a buyer, a landlord, or a tenant. I'm gonna go with the listing this time. Since I am on a leadership team, this stuff is here. But if you're a single agent, you should have just the um, your name there and team will likely be grayed out. Under client, we are going to find the client that we just made, Jane Doe. Okay, we've got Jane Doe right here, so we'll click on her. It is now linking this opportunity to this contact. You can also find it under, after you've created it, under the contact tab if you find that um, client. So if you can't remember two years from now which property Jane Doe purchased, you can go under the opportunities and see it. If there's a co-seller, you can add them right here in the same way. You just start searching for the person's name and it will pop up. Right here is the opportunity name. It did name it for us as Jane Doe-listing. I would request that you change this to be the name, the name of the street. So we'll do one, two, three, hot street. 
The reason is when you call me about 123 Hot Street, if it is named Jane Doe listing, I have a hard time finding it. All right, down here, if you have the estimated list price, we can go ahead and enter that. I'm going to go ahead and put in 100000 just for ease of math later. And the commission rate. Let's say I'm going to take 3% on this listing. This opportunity phase does have to do with these the sales pipeline out here. If you use the sales pipeline, um, to watch your listings, you can see how many listings you've got in each state. So if you've got one that you're just cultivating, you haven't quite set the appointment, but you're trying real hard, you can go ahead and create an opportunity and put it in the cultivate stage. And then as you set an appointment, you can move it over. And as it's active, you can move it over again. Uh, the one thing to note is that you cannot turn in any files for compliance review until it's at least in the active stage. We don't want your IBS, so that's why they did that. Um, we do want it when it's active, but we don't want to check everybody's IBSs if you're just cultivating the listing. The stage here, if it's already um, showing, you can put it in showing. If you're already negotiating, you can move it there. Legacy is for your files as they move them over from dot loop. So don't worry about that right now. So we're gonna put it, we're gonna say that this one, we've actually started negotiations on. And we're gonna click on create. All right, so it lands us on, in dot loop, um, you had the, the place where you could go under and put in all of the information. You don't have to fill everything in. However, the more you fill in, the better um, for later. And to fill in anything in its square, it'll be the pencil that's in the top uh, right-hand corner just above the block. So if I wanted to do the property address, I could do that right here. The seller's worksheet, we could do that here any description or notes. And just uh, for a heads up later, if you lose the opportunity, if it cancels, this is the button where you come in and choose lost opportunity. That means it, it terminated and that that um, property is not coming back. It's not the way to do it if you have a listing and um, one contract terminated, but you're still keeping that. I'll show that later. All right, so if we're talking about documents, we're gonna click on the Documents tab. All right, so under the Documents tab, we have this right here. This is our checklist. It is not, does not mean you've already uploaded them. If it has this word, add a file over here, this button, that means you have not uploaded something to that slot yet. Yes, they do have to be separated out and it will be easier once uh, DocuSign is integrated inside of uh, command for them to be separated out. Uh, but also, uh, Kelly's gonna be able to do some pretty awesome stuff later on, uh, but she has to know what they are. And if it's labeled SDN, she might not know that that's the seller's disclosure. Also in Dotloop, you had to do your own folders. You had to create a listing folder, an under contract folder, maybe a terminated folder. Um, Command does that for you. These are folders over here. So if we've got the listing folder, the under contract folder. And as you see, when you click on under contract, the checklist changes right here. And then we've got our closed folder for when you're uploading the HUD. Right now I'm turning in a listing though, so I'm gonna go ahead and click on the listing folder. To upload the IBS, I would check, I would click on add a file right here. And I can either browse my computer to find it, just like this, or if the file was in DocuSign Rooms, there would be a DocuSign Rooms button right here, and I could click on that and find it from a list. I can also keep my folder open if I have a, them all saved to a folder on my, say in my documents, I could keep it open here and I could drag and drop it into the uh, perforated looking section right here and click assign once you see the file name below. I'll go ahead and upload something.
let's look so you can see what that looks like. <laughs> Give them a census. All right. Oh. Sometimes you'll get an error like that. We can just try again. There we go. Once you see the file name here, you can go ahead and click assign. You will want to go through each one of these uh, checklist items that you that applies to it and upload a file for each one. If you have an item that's not on here, as you can see, we only have the most commonly used um, files on here. Um, if you have a homeowners association or any kind of ad item that are not on here, we didn't want to junk up the list and put every single form that's possible on here. We just put the most commonly used. So if you have one that applies, you can click add item. Then you give the document a name right here. You tell it what type of a document it is, if it's an authorization or the one that closely fits. They, there might not be one that fits exactly, so just choose one. And then you can um, either find it or drag and drop in here and click save. One more shortcut, if you have the file on your computer with all of your PDFs on it and you, wanna, um, you don't wanna click add item, assign, add item, assign. You can do this attach multiple files right here. And then you can drag and drop each item that pertains to the checklist item into its perforated folder and then click attach. That way if you have more than one, you're not having, it, it saves you a few button clicks if you do it this way. It also works the same if you have DocuSign attached as well and the files are in there. You can um, choose from a list as well and get them in there. All right, so now let's say I have all of my documents ready and they need to be uh, sent to the office. This click uh, Submit to Market Center and submit, the button will be ch will change to, uh, to a grayed out button and it will say submitted right here instead of open. Give it about 24 to 48 hours and you'll see that um, compliance has come in and you'll get either a uh, Kelly push notifications if you're set up for that and you have the app on your phone or you'll get a red dot on the bell at the top of every uh, command page. When you click on that, you'll see that you have a notification. It'll say that the file has been approved or denied. And you can click on the little word here to go straight to that file. Once you have finished with that one, you can click dismiss. If the file has been approved, then when you come in, it'll have a uh, blue box that says approved right here. If it has been rejected, you will see a uh, red box that says returned. If you would like to talk to compliance, you can do so by clicking right here. This opens a chat window and you can say, Patty, um, if you're wanting to tell them something ahead of time, the file or the listing never hit the market, so no MLS page. Let's say it, it never hit the market, it went straight under contract and you would like to tell her that, you can click add reply. And what that does is opens a chat box right here um, that, that then stays open and Patty can talk back and forth. Patty, Rebecca, whoever's doing compliance that day. If it is returned, there will likely be a red dot here where Patty or the compliance team has told you what is wrong, what you need to fix. Let's say that the IBS that I had uploaded did not have the bottom uh, information uh, filled out at all. Once I got that document corrected, I could click on these three little dots and I could hit, well, I never submitted. There would be a replace button at that point. Then you could search and find the new one. There will then be, um, versions of it behind here so that you can see all of the, the different versions that were uploaded. Are there any questions on submitting a listing just yet? Let 
Okay, perfect. We're going to say that this, my listing has been approved. Now it's under contract. So I'm going to go to the under contract folder right here. And then I am going to um, upload everything from here. Click on add file just like we did before, find the file and submit it. Again, I will have the submitted button right here after I submit, approved and rejected button up here after um, compliance has looked at it. If compliance returns something, let's say that they're saying, remember I said this one never hit the MLS, let's say they're asking, they've returned it, it returned it, it, returned it, and need the MLS page. If I do not make a change to this file, I cannot resubmit. This button up here that's grayed out, it's never going to pop up. Patty can't see your messages and um, it's, there, it's just going to sit there. So I need to make a change to this file in order to make that light up. So you can either replace any item on here. Maybe you choose um, the receipted page because it's just one page. Um, just do the replace or you can upload something into a different slot. So I could upload the IBS into the non-realty slot, anything, anything to make a change to where this button will light up. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay. So once it is approved here and I've uploaded every document that I need, uh, and she, she will tag me in ready for CDA, and then I can come in and make your CDA. There are currently two ways of doing this. The, the preferred method right now, because most people are still aware of how to do that. I see a chat. Hold on. Let me see. Dennis, I'll talk to you about that afterwards. Okay, so the preferred way to tell me how to do the commission breakdown is to go to mykw.kw.com. Most people are familiar with green sheets. So um, while there is the commissions tab, what? While there is the commissions tab um, open at this point for everybody, um, we're still labbing that. And so you don't have to use commissions tab. If you're more familiar with the green sheets, then I would say go ahead and use green sheets. So we're gonna log in with the same username and password that we used in command. And I'm just gonna touch on how to do one real quick in case somebody is not familiar. If you hover over the word technology and go down to green sheet, that's how you get in. And then we're gonna create a green sheet. The thing that's different about doing it here than doing it in um, when we were using dot loop is these first two questions. And they're kind of deceiving. It asks, are you the listing agent? I am, I submitted a listing. So I'm gonna say, yes, I am. If you're not, you say no, if you're the buyer's agent. Then it asks, has this listing been entered into the KWLS? If it is your listing, answer yes. If it is not your listing and you're the buyer's agent, even if it is a Keller Williams Denton um, listing, please say no. If you ever come in and it is your listing and you receive an error saying that um, a green sheet has already been created, just say no and no, you're not gonna mess anything up on our end. It is okay uh, and it will get you past that error so you can create the, the green sheet. Since I said it was, it's gonna have me come in and find it. So I can type in the MLS number or the street name and attach it. I don't actually have a listing, so I'm gonna go back and say no, no. No, I am not. No, it is not. The only difference on your side is it, if you attach it to the listing, it will um, import some of this information. It's mainly just the street address, so it doesn't take long to enter. 
All right, on the green sheet, everything that is in red needs to be uh, filled out before it will allow you to save it. We're gonna click that it is a residential. We're gonna give it the contract date. Let's say that the contract was executed on March 1st. Then we're gonna give it a closing date. I'm hoping that you did this immediately following option. I'm hoping that you did. But the requirement is to at least do it five days before closing. That way the um, compliance has time to get in there and get everything reviewed because we do have um, 200 agents in the office. So compliance can take a bit of time. And then it gives me a couple of business days in order to get your CDA created. So I'm going to say that I did that and it's closing on March 31st. I'm going to tell it that it is a listing sold and that it's a property. Do you have a question, Cynthia? Um, so I've never used the green sheet before, but I just did my closing Thursday in the command. Mm -hmm. Is it okay if I don't do the green sheet, just use the command that... It's okay to use the commissions tab. Just know that we are labbing it. So bear with me if there's any errors when I make your CDA. Um, okay. And make sure that you do submit it. So if I get through this real quick, um, I'm going to touch on how to do it in the commissions tab as well. Okay, perfect. Okay. Thank All you. right. So on the property type, we're going to tell it whether it's a resale, a new home, lot, farm or ranch, or lease. I'm going to say it's a resale. And then I'm going to say it's 123 Main Street, the city. We'll give it Denton, Texas. Oh, I said Hot Street. Oh, well. <laughs> 76205 and county is Denton. All right. So now on this tab, I have everything that is in red filled out. Anything more is great, but those are the required fields. And then over here, I'm going to give it the sales price. Please notice that I've entered this already in command, okay? The green sheet has information on it that um, you've already entered several other places by the time you get here, even with dot loop. So the commissions tab is actually going to pull this information rather than having to retype it, okay? It, the commissions tab is going to be great once everything is ironed out with it. So, all right, so I've done the sales price and that I took a 3% commission and it automatically calculated the commission for me. I can click next section and give it the buyer's name. The buyer's name is John Doe. And then I can click on next section. The seller's name is Jane Doe. Next section. All right, this is the agent details tab. This is where you tell me who the commission goes to. If you are on a team with your husband and or wife or um, significant other, please make sure that the name here is the person that you want the commission for. So if you turn in everything under your name, but your significant other gets the commission, click this little um, magnifying glass here search for the person and make sure that you attach it to that person. That way I know who you want it uh, closed out under. I'm gonna say that I'm getting this. If you're on a team and you need to add your Rainmaker onto here or your buyer's agent, you would do the same. You would go under agent B, click the, uh, the magnifying glass, find that person and get their information here. Agent role, I'm an individual agent. The type, we said it was a listing. The agency is the seller. As I did that, notice that the selling unit opened up. Each side, buyer and listing, is one unit. So if you're splitting this, it always needs to equal one. If I had an agent B over here and we were splitting it 50-50, I would split the unit 0.5 and 0.5. If we were splitting it 70-30, I would split it 0.7 and 0.3. For this one, I'm an individual agent, so I'm going to give myself the entire unit. 
when I click out, the gross commission automatically calculates per the amount of unit that I took um, and how much commission I gave it on the previous tab. If I have an outside referral, this is where that information would go. I could put in, I had a 25% referral fee right here. And it would tell me, remember to put their information in the outside referral section at the bottom. I, I will do that. I click OK and it goes ahead and calculates the referral percentage for me. Okay. Um, I'm not going to do that because I want to keep my math easy, but that's where that would go. Please make sure that you have the um, agreement, the referral agreement and the W9 of the other brokerage in uh, your command file so that when I go to create this CDA, I can do it there. It automatically says that um, I am on an 80-20 split with the office. If you're on a 70-30, it, it would say 70 here. If you are capped and want to make sure that your green sheet looks like the CDA, you can go ahead and change this to 100% um, if you're capped on company dollar. Don't worry if you don't do it correctly, it's all right. My system will catch that it's not correct and it will do um, the correct amount. Uh, if you're capped on royalty, this is where you would click yes. If you are not capped on royalty, you'll click no. Again, my system will not do it incorrectly. Um, so if you're not sure, you can always click no. And then the CDA, if you are, um, it'll just be a little higher than your green sheet. If you have a bonus, if you have a new build, this is where you put that as well. So I could put in the $1,000 bonus right here and it would automatically calculate it. It automatically populates with $10 for KW Cares. If you would like to change that, you could click zero. This is um, KW Kids Can, and this is Bold Scholarship. Okay, you can put zero in there or however much you want to put. If you are paying for part of the buyer's home warranty, this is where that would go. So if I was paying say $500 towards the buyer's home warranty, I could put that there. I'm not going to this time though. And then here is a pretty, um, it, it's not really clear section. So it says agent concession to buyer or seller. If you put a number in here, I don't know if you're giving it to the buyer or the seller. So please don't put it there. I'd rather have it down here under deductions. So if I had a credit to the seller, I could tell it what it is right there. And then I could say $500 credit to the seller. It automatically takes that out of the commission down here at the bottom. If I had buyer, I could say to buyer. This is you talking to me, telling me where that money goes, okay? The one thing that is on every, um, every CDA is the compliance review fee. And that is the $15. If you forget that, that's okay. Your total will not match mine. It'll be off by $15 and that's okay. Um, our, our system automatically does that. If I have more than one, let's say I was doing the compliance review fee and a credit to the seller, I could put uh, deduction number two here, deduction number three here, and deduction number four here. Okay. Down at the bottom, this is our Keller Williams Dent and Caring Works. This is the, um, it's the same kind of um, nonprofit KW, um, my mind just went blank, um, scholarship. If one of our agents here at Keller Williams is struggling, they can apply for this um, and it would stay here at home rather than going to Keller Williams International. So if you wanted to put $10 in there, you could, or you can also put zero. Right here is after the tree, how much my commission check uh, should be. If you're happy with that, you can click next section. And here's the co-broker information. You are required to put something in here. We'll say this was Amy Smith. 
if you worked with this agent and you really liked her, him or her and wanted to um, have Jesse give them a call and see if they could are interested in coming to Keller Williams, you can put in the information right here. I get this information to, um, to Jesse and they go in your downline. So our leadership does try everything to make sure that the, the person that they talk to, um, if they come on board, do uh, name you as their broker. So, or not broker, uh, sponsor. Uh, so they would go into your downline. Um, we would put this in our, our tracking system and that's how we could uh, track that it was you. So if you don't want to turn that in, that's okay. And you can just do the Amy Smith or whatever their name is. Title goes right here. This is very important. Please check for typos. I do copy this when I'm sending the CDA out. And I send so many out that I'm not going to be able to tell which one bounced back. So if you put dot cum, it's not going to go to title. And at that point, it will be your responsibility to get that over to title. So when they come back later and say, I don't have your CDA yet, that might be why. So you'll just type their email address in. Let's say it's Sprayberry at, and, and the rest of it. Just go ahead and put that in there. That's how I get it. Okay. If you have any notes to me, it would go in this section right here. I do check them before I do the CDA. So um, any notes on where the, buy, the, the credit's going, anything like that can go in here. And then you're going to click Submit to MCA and Submit Green Sheet. Now, given that you have done everything correct, this big red bar won't be here. I left something blank intentionally. I don't really want this in our system. Uh, if you get the big red bar, it does tell you why you forgot. I forgot the title company email address, so I would go back, fix that, click Submit to Market Center, and I'd be good to go. After your file is approved, um, the compliance review team tags me and ready for CDA. If I have this already, I go ahead and create your CDA as quickly as possible and get it to title. So I do suggest doing this as soon as you click that submit to market center button on your opportunity uh, for review, come do your CDA or your green sheet. It can sit here. It's not going to bother me in any way, shape or form if it sits there um, until you have an approved file. All right, does anybody have any questions about green sheets? No. All right, we have 20 minutes. I will go and talk about the commissions tab. Oh, there's one thing. Okay, this contract terminated, but the listing, I still have the listing. Now I have another contract. What do I do? So in dot loop, you would create, you would rename the terminated um, file, terminated contract, and you would create a new contract folder, correct? Well, on this one, instead, if you see this little triangle right here, I can do add a version. And I can call it under contract version two or contract two, whatever you want to name it, and create click create new version. What that does is create a whole new folder. It takes your checklist over here and it um, resets it. And so you're able to do a whole new contract. Does that help? Okay. Now let's talk about the um, commissions tab. Before you can get this commissions tab right here to light up, you do have to do an offer. Don't worry, it's not any more information than you would have put on the green sheet. However, this offers tab is set up for multiple offers. So you can literally, if you have five different offers on this property, add a new offer for each one. And then it, what it will do is break it down um, side by side, facts on facts for your seller so that they can look and choose uh, which offer is best for them. But you do have to do a, a um, offer in order to get to the contract or the commissions tab. So I'm going to do contract. 
and I'm going to create an offer. I'm going to give it the offer date. Let's say that the offer date was, what did we say, March 1st? And the closing date we said was going to be the 31st. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Uh-oh, I have a visitor. Hi. All right, and then I'm going to click on parties. I'm going to give it the buyer name. We said that was John Doe. and Jane Doe. As you can see, the only thing that's required at this time um, is the names of each, the buyer and the seller, but you can fill out all of the information. The associate's name, so this would be the uh, buyer's associate's name. And since that popped up, it's just easier. I'm going to choose Brad McKissick. He's the buyer's agent on this one. All right, and then it auto-filled my information as the listing. Then we can click Terms. If you were going to use this to compare offers, I would fill out as much information as possible. It does make it easier when you're looking at it. And then it's asking for the terms. So what it's asking is on that first page, how much were they going to pay cash? We said this was 100,000. So I'll say they're putting 10% down we're going to say they're doing $10,000. Okay. And then it says, how much are they financing? So I'm going to say it was 90,000. And then it goes ahead and calculates the sales price over here. The earnest amount, if you tell it that it was 1% earnest, then it'll automatically um, calculate the earnest money right there. Then we're going to put in that they were paying a hundred dollar option fee. Buyer will give notice to terminate within three days. I, I don't think that this part of it is required. I'm not going to give it. Let's see. Seller will contrib contribute if there's anything for residential um, service contracts so the home warranty or any closing costs. You can put that right here and it'll automatically bring it over. I'm going to leave it as zero though. Okay. And if you were using this to send to your seller for the multiple offer situation, you could say the pros of this one. These are your words. What do you think makes this offer a little better than the other ones? And then the cons over here, what makes it worse than the others um, in your summary. And that way when, when they get the breakdown of all the different offers, you're able to see right beside it, this one's better on this way and this one's um, not so good on this way. Um, but just to get to the commissions tab, I don't need that. I'm gonna click save. Okay. So if I had multiple offers right here, they would be listed out. I could add new offer and go all the way through and it, it would compare them side by side. But to get the commissions tab to open up, I just need to click accept on the one that they chose. Then as you can see, the commissions tab has opened up. Now, the commissions tab is just the agent details part of the green sheet. So much easier. We don't have to type in all of the information that we needed um, in the other section uh, on the green sheet. So it automatically brought over the sales price. It automatically brought over the commission percent. But if I reduced my commission, I could change it right here. It automatically brought over how much um, commission I'll be making on this and the unit. Okay, and then I can give it the contract date, which we said was March 1st, and the close date it pulled from the offer con um, the offers tab. The agent breakdown is right here. Okay, if I it went ahead and put my name, it went ahead and put the one unit and the commission. This is where you will be able to, once this is up and running um, fully, be able to see without contacting anybody how close you are to capping. If you've paid in any, 
it'll show you how much you've paid and the balance that is due um, and what your cap total is. So this is royalty, the 3000 and this is the company dollar. It shows that I haven't paid any. I'm not an agent, so that would be why I haven't paid any yet. Um, but it shows that my cap would be 4,500. It would show how much I've actually paid and how much uh, the balance is due. As this goes along, it should uh, raise on its own. It's highly likely for now though, that it will get its numbers after transmittal. So um, anything you've closed that month, it probably will not update. Again, if this is wrong, that's okay. Our system is designed to override this and do uh, what is necessary. However, if you log in and you know you're capped and this, either of these are not showing as capped, please open the um, question mark here, send a ticket to support and let them know. There is a known glitch with it on some people and they're trying to figure it out. So the more people that um, it's not showing correct that turn it in, the faster they can get that fixed. But it goes ahead and shows me just how much royalty will be right here and just how much uh, the company dollar split will be right here. If I want to donate to the KW Cares and the Kids Can or the Bold Scholarship, I can type that in right here. Then it gives me the check amount. If I need to add an item, like the transaction fee, I'm gonna click on add item right here. And I'm gonna say this is a deduction. And we'll say that's the $15. I don't need the tax ID, that's okay. Description, TF, pay to, Keller Williams. and our address right now. It does require that you put in an address. They are um, working on you being able to set up these uh, common deductions on your own ahead of time. And then at that point, you could set these up and um, not have to enter in all of this information. It does take a little bit longer right now um, than just putting TF in $15 but it's coming. All right, so what that does is it goes ahead and puts it under deductions right here. If you have any other kind of deductions, like you need to do a um, inside, uh, outside referral would go here, any deductions where you were paying it to the buyer or the seller would go here. Uh, you just type in just the same type of information and it'll let me know. Okay. Now this over here, I need to get that out of the way, is your running total. So it is adding everything that you do over here and putting it over here so you can see. So it says the total commission was $3,000. The royalty would be 180. The uh, company dollar would be 600. The pay to agent is uh, 2205, which agent it goes to. Um, how much it's going to the office and the total of all deductions. Any questions so far? Okay. If you are on a team and you need to do a split, here's how you do that. As you can see, ag co broker payment is not what we're looking for. We want another agent. So, real quickly, what you have to do is either reduce the unit or the total commission amount. So let's say I'm the rainmaker and I'm going to give um, half of this to the buyer's agent. I would just reduce this commission to 1500. Okay. And once it's done updating, I can now add an agent right here. And then I don't even know if I'm going to be able to do this, but I'm going to see Jesse, Jesse Newquist. Okay, and I can click add. At that point, once it loads, it, it does the section below for Jesse. And then I can put 
fifteen hundred dollars to Jesse. Ooh, ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Too much money in there. Jesse's getting a good payment. There we go. Okay. So these numbers, if I was giving the unit, I could do that here as well. But the numbers do have to equal the 3,000 total. Otherwise, it won't let you submit. And any deductions on um, Jesse's side would go right here, or if Jesse wanted to do the, um, any of the donations. If you want to do KW Cares, you will have to do, uh, or Caring Works, uh, you will have to do a deduction and write in Caring Works at this time. One thing that you might notice is it didn't ask anywhere for the title company's email address. We have to do currently an add note. And if you, and you do have to do this before you submit. So if you could put the title company's email in here, Michelle at trnt.net and click add, then that gives me the title company's information here. If you forget that, that's okay. I'm going back and looking for the receipted page and hopefully it's on there. If I don't find it on the receipted page, I'll send it to you, but I'll let you know in the email that I was unable to find the title company's email address. And so it does need to be forwarded to title. When it's all done and I'm happy and I don't have this red bar telling me that I've forgotten something, um, you can click submit. Until you click submit, I am not able to pull it. So if you forget to click submit, I'm going to send you an email and say, hey, I need you to submit it. I can't pull it until you do. Any questions on that? All right. Well, that's the commissions tab. Once I go in um, and get tagged and ready for CDA, I'm going to look here first. If I see that the commissions tab has been filled out, then I'll go ahead and use that. If I don't see a commissions tab, then I'll go search for the green sheet. All right. Well, if there's no questions, that is how to submit for review and how to get your CDA. Right. I have a question. Yes. Um, when you were doing, going on and logging on and finding the green sheet, and because I've only done one and I did the he actually did it for me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, how, how do I get green sheet page again? How do you get to the green sheet page? Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So we're going to go to mykw.kw.com. Okay. My KW. Mm -hmm. Okay. KW.kw.com. Kw okay. And then it should load. Well, it loaded straight in, but it's going to ask for your username and password. It's the same one you use for command. Okay. And then you're going to hover over this word technology and go to okay. green sheet. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. If it, remember, if it's your listing, uh, and then you'll do create a green sheet right here. Remember, okay. if it's your listing, you can say yes, yes. Right. And if it's not, please say no, say no, no, no. Yeah, I and remember that part. Ever get in there, say no, no. <laughs> okay. Okay. Okie dokie. All right. Any other questions? I think that's it. All right. I'm going to stop. Thank you so much. All right. You guys have a great day. Thank you.